good at this, I would have a, a, a couple movie clips. I would have Pirates of the Caribbean with, uh, you know, the, the Pirates Code is more of a suggestion than it is law. And I would have uh, Scotty who says you cannot change the laws of physics. And somehow between those two probably lies reality. <laughs> the law is difficult. I mean, we, uh, Christianity has struggled with this. How much of it do we keep? What do we keep? To what end? Um, what is the law? Because here we have the law. I mean, we have a lot of different uh, ways that we've divided it over the years. I don't think you'll find them in the Bible that way. Whoops. People have argued against, oh, that's ceremonial law, and that's civic law, and that's God's law. And besides the latter, I don't know if the Bible declares them that way. But we're going to get into this today. Maybe we can make a little bit of sense out of it some sense out of it and we'll do this more as a Jewish and early Christianity preaching instead of Catholicism we'll ask questions let you re-answer it probably won't be rhetorical it can be rhetorical but uh, this lesson is definitely up there with the uh, college level courses you need to stop you need to think not regurgitate what Christianity has said for a thousand years, you'd probably be wrong. We'll, we'll start with an example of what you just need to stop and, and think about the world. Who wrote most of the New Testament? And before you answer it, you're wrong. Okay, who, ordered, who, who wrote most of the New, New Testament? Paul. And if it's not Paul, then I'll say God. In between well, one of us, we'll get it right. Well, we won't go with God, though that's technically correct. So we'll, we'll rephrase the question. What human wrote down most of the <laughs> New, 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 New Testament? And it's not Paul. Peter? Nope. John? Are, nope. We, are we looking for Paul's secretary? Because Paul didn't write it. It's not a trick question. <laughs> There's nothing in, in today's service that's a trick question. That This is a real legitimate question to make you stop and think about just not regurgitating what, what you, you've been told over the years. The answer is Luke. Presumably because his gospel and acts are longer than everyone's. 2,000 more words plus than Paul. You can't sit there and write three books equaling three paragraphs and say, oh, look, I wrote more books in the New Testament than the book of Luke. That's not how we look at things. That's not how we count. <laughs> Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke. Luke to his friends. <laughs> okay, who has heard differently than we're not under the law? Heard it. Heard it. That's because we're under a roof. There's your trick question. <laughs> We fought about this for for generations and and, and and all, and I don't think it's really that complicated. Our problem is, like most controversies, or contra how do you say that? Controversies. Controversies. Controversy. <laughs> You've got scriptures you can pull out to prove to prove your point of view, whether it's. Ecclesiastes, speaking in tongues, or, or the law. But let's see if we can put this together. I'm not going to use three verses. You could use hundreds of verses on, on this to get this going. But I'm only going to use three and make, make you all think about this. Okay, Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law. I came... What did I say? I did not come to... The, Destroy it, but to fulfill. Now there is a difference between fulfilling and destroying. And this is the great big difference. Is let, let's just go for the, the simple one. Let's, let's just go, well, I don't know why I should do this. 
I think we're going to have to go this way. What is the law? The law. Does God really think we're under torching of sheep for all of eternity? No. Because let's be serious. <laughs> torching sleep, sheep does not save you. I mean, somewhere we can make, get to the point where it'll move your sin ahead for maybe one year. But torching sheep is like paying the minimum on your credit card. You're never going to pay the debt. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> and the sheep is the same way about this. We have in the Old Testament, we have the Ark of the Covenant. And what was, what was said about this Ark? What, what was the purpose of this Ark? Who, who's seen uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark? And what, and what did uh, Indiana Jones' buddy say this is? Who's explaining it? I'll come. I saw it about the same time as Blue's Brother. <laughs> It's like a microphone. It's like a telephone to God. You'd have the mercy seat, the angels, and what would you have inside of the ark? You had the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. We got the staff. Let's forget the other one. The manna. We got some dry bread. <laughs> the Ten Commandments were inside. What was on the outside of the ark? Pomegranates. Well, it was decorated. There was something that was kept on the outside. The handles to carry it with. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. And the big brass rings that the handles went, went through. Uh -huh. <laughs> the angels on top. The law was on the outside. The mosaic law. What us Christians call the Pentateuch. What the Jews would call... The Torah. <laughs> the law was kept on the outside. Because God, on the inside, was the mercy seat. Where forgiveness was dealt out. Shekinah, they will get into the glory of, of God. So the law was not inside of the ark. And one of these days, I think I'll get around to see if I can pull a lesson out on making... Mary, the mother of Jesus, into a type of ark. Since she also carried God. <laughs> the law. Um, Jesus said in that one part of the law, tat or tittle, dash or dot, however you want to do it in English, till heaven and earth pass away. I already thought heaven and earth, I think, appears in the Bible way more than it should. And I don't think 99% of the time we're talking about up and down. I think we're talking about earth, earth. And we seem way too concerned. I mean, creation is important. God created, it's a witness. Very nice place to have. Well, what else could be, I think, rightfully interpreted as earth that God would be more concerned with? The universe is what I usually read it as. Mortal life? I think people. I think man is earth. What is Adam made out of? Earth. Dirt. <laughs> when we remember. If you look at the definitions of heaven and earth in the Hebrew... You know, the, the big important definitions, you know, comes first, you get down to the latter. The big, big definition is earth is ground, dirt, country, world. Heaven is up. It could mean air, it could mean sky, it could mean space. But the very last definition of earth is everything that is not heaven. Hmm. Heaven is not earth. No matter how you confuse the two, everything that ain't earth is heaven. And the last definition for heaven, after you get done with sky and ionosphere and outer space, the last definition is heaven is everything that's not earth. You know, when 
when God created Adam out of the dust of the ground, the human body, even now, has all the elements in it that from the earth that our bodies need. Dust and dust. Uh -huh. Yep. But no, I think it's a little bit more different if you read the, you know, the Lord's Supper, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is kind of more, more interesting to put it down. Earth is a nice place to be able to walk on. Yep. <laughs> nice place to live, so I'm told, compared to the rest, anyways. <laughs> Okay, the law. Let, let's turn to Romans 8, 1, and let me, let me have some heresy here and just say this is the law. 8, 1. <clears throat> therefore is therefore, ooh, there is therefore, now no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm going to be so bold to say there is only one sin. It's a big book for only having one sin. There's only one sin. Disobedience. That's really the only sin, sin there is. God say do this and you don't do it. God say don't do it and you did it. <laughs> I think that is really the only sin there is. And as far as the law go, I think the law, everything that's based around the law is sin equals death. Now that law, much like the laws of physics, <laughs> the law of tithing, the law of sowing and reaping, is universal. It don't matter whether you're a Christian or not. These things you are not going to be able to run run away from. <coughs> don't matter if you're a heathen or a Christian, you're going to die, and you're going to pay taxes. <laughs> now, if you go back with Jesus saying, "Not one tot or tittle is going to fall from the law until all is fulfilled," but the law of cynical's death is still true. If it's not, if God finished it on the cross, and we're going to heaven anyways, well, that seems kind of like cheating. Don't seem right. Now, the order's fulfilled. God has already paid for your, your gift of life, which is true. But it still exists. That law is still there. It is fulfilled. Like I said, it, you know, as we're after the cross, so we, uh, we get paid, uh, it's already paid. Those who died before the cross got paid on credit, got paid in the future for their time perspective. But the requirement is repentance. Well, there's some requirements to it, but yeah. it's paid. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't accept it, it's already paid. It doesn't mean yeah. you're going to heaven, but it's, right. it's paid. Even, even if you never accept it. That, but that, to go to heaven, the yep. requirement is repentance. Yep. That's what I meant. And then for that requirement of going to heaven, that is, that is larger than we think it is. But one other thing is it's larger than we, we come out to say. We always want to say, you want to be saved, which is a true statement. Accept Christ's gift, you're saved. Now, if you want to be saved... A state of being, we add a whole lot more rules to that, don't, don't we? Or we add just one, obedience. If you've been saved for 20 years, and I, the heathen, or, or a Christian, can't tell it, I don't know if you're saved. If you're saved, what's going to happen? Love one another. You'll know you're Christians, you love one another. And you become a and you become a reflection of Jesus. And you share his good news. And you become a new person. And etc. <laughs> and etc. <cetera. laughs> One of the biggest ones is you know, we, we don't talk about it too much of that is works. 
which equals fruit. Mm -hmm. If you don't produce fruit, are you saved? I'm not going to roll, roll the dice on that one. <laughs> Christ had a hot habit of uh, you know, cursing that one tree that had no fruit on it. <laughs> and one of those, one of those darn there apostles wrote, I will show you my faith by my works. By my works. James. Let's see your faith without works. I'll wait, I'll wait for a while. <laughs> He's dead. Now, see, you, you don't, it's not what saves you, but you are not saved without these little bit of additions, mm -hmm. a little bit of, of adding. Which brings us back to the controversy of the law. The law of sin equals death has not got, gone away. In our case, it's been paid for by Christ. But it's, it, it can't go away. And it, otherwise, Christ died to save those before him, not those that after him. And that's, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It, it can't make sense. It doesn't, you know, why, why do you go, go through all of that? Let's go to one last scripture, and that's Acts 21. What, what is that bumper sticker? We're Acts 21 Church? What is it? 238. Oh, Acts 2. I, I was off by 20. Good. <laughs> Did that make any sense? <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about the law. And really, 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 this is going to bug, bug everybody. This is the part that's going to make everybody stop and think. Act 2120. To set this up, Paul has come back to Jerusalem. I'm not quite sure. This is at least a decade after the cross, and maybe twice that. It seems that the book is probably 30, 35 years in, in length, the book of Acts. And I don't, you know, a chapter doesn't equal a year in any how it works. But this, this, is, this is quite the time after the cross. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me that. Those of you that have got, got your calendars out. Okay. Uh, 2120. And when they heard it, well, let me, go, let me go to 17 real quick. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he being Paul, the brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went, went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. I'll interpret. James, the brother of Jesus, 12 disciples are who the elders are. And I don't know if all 12 are there, but let's let's make it a majority. We can have a quorum. We can hold Congress. We can pass laws, okay? <laughs> Whatever the case may be. Uh, the, and when he had greeted them, he told in detail these things which God had done among the Gentiles throughout his, through his ministry. Let me interpret the word Gentiles for you. Non-Jews, and it really means dogs. So, from the Jewish perspective, you have Jews, and if you're not one of us, you're a dog. Very important to remember. Be humble. <laughs> and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and they said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed, and they are all zealous for the law. But they have been informed that you... Teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children nor to walk according to the customs. So this is important. They're going, hey, it has been told that you're teaching the Jews that are among the Gentiles, not the Gentiles among the Jews, not to follow the law. True or false? In this part, I really haven't really heard preach. We, they, they, they want to skip over this part. <laughs> True or false? Is he teaching the Jews not to follow the law? True. I don't know. 
So yeah, I let me reread both books of Corinthians real quick, and I'll get sure. back to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is important when you read the rest, rest of the Bible on, on what's going on, because if you were to give Paul a title, what title would you give him? Apostle. Apostle. So do you stop there, or do you have a little bit more adjectives? Apostle to the Gentiles. Apostles to the Gentiles. You would not call him an apostle to the Jews. And why would that be, dear wife? Because the Jews kept trying to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say? I mean, you try to kill a guy once or twice, he gets very uppity and goes, fine. I won't talk to you no more. I'm going to the Dukes, <laughs> is what he said. <laughs> And it might be more than one, one once or twice. Maybe, may you know, he, he might be a slow learner. I'm not quite, quite sure. I would have to do some counting. Uh, the, the. What then? The assembly must certainly meet, for they will hear that you have come. Therefore, do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them all and be purified with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and all that may know that these things of which you were informed concerning are, are nothing but that you yourself also walk orderly and keep the law. So, we've got to have to answer the question, was the answer the apostles and Paul decided to lie, or are they telling the truth? They make a good lesson either way. I am going to err, let's just go with, it's the truth. But, 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 but we're not under the law. I can turn to a half dozen verses that says we're not under the law. Let's keep reading. <clears throat> but concerning the Gentiles who believe, we have written and decided that there should observe no such things And what are, what are the such things? The law. They shall observe no such law, except eating food offered to idols, consuming blood, meat of strangled animals, or sexual immorality. Good answer. <laughs> I'll accept that. You should have waited for the day, maybe double though. <laughs> But Andy, now you have a dual system. Well, not for salvation, I know. Salvation is still through Jesus Christ, no other name is given. <coughs> but with the Jews, whether they be natural or, I use the word civic, or Proselyte. religious, proselytes. proselytes. They have a different set of rules to follow to be saved. I can't find any place that teaches otherwise. Jesus says he's the door. Yep. But mm -hmm. Jesus was also a Jew. <laughs> Jesus was also talking to the Jews. But let's, if you think about this and you think I'm wrong about this idea, how about this is make it much, much, much broader than this. Once you are saved, there are Christians, which technically there should not be in any Jews. I mean, we, we should all be followers of Christ, follower of God, follower of the God of, of Moses and Abraham. I don't think this division was meant any more than a division between East and West Catholicism and, and uh, the Protestants and, and, and Romans. I mean, there should be the church, not the churches. <laughs> but that's a different sermon all, all together. There are verses that say if, if a Christian follows the new moons and the feasts, what are you to, to, to do? Nothing. There are Christians who don't follow the new moons and the feasts and the holy days. What are you supposed to do? Nothing. <laughs> Who are you to judge another man's servant? 
but, but, and you go, but, 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 and you still go, but, but you take it down even further. I believe there are those among us being true Christians. I think some people are told to marry. And if they don't, it would be a disobedience. I think there are people told not to be married. And if they do, disobedience. They're probably told to drink, not to drink. There's all different rules for us on this walk. And all of them, I think, ends up being a, a mosaic. It takes a lot of itty bitty pictures of Christ to make Christ. I think what we call almost, what's another word for, for, for racist? When, when, you, when you say all oh, Tahitians just uh, lazy and hang out at the beach. Bigoted, xenophobia. No, uh, it's got some fa fallacy. No, 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 not, 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 not the logic, but it's uh, Germans over engineer everything. Stereotypes. Stereotypes. I think stereotypes are all a mosaic <coughs> of God. Hmm. I think there's parts of God where he works too hard. I think the parts of God he created the Sabbath. And all of these little bits and pieces of humanity makes up humanity and makes up the picture of Christ. So there is, you know, bring out Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. And there's a time and a place, a culture history, down to this day, down to this hour, down to this minute. There's a time for you to be doing something. And I think all of it's a reflection. All of it is part of what you're supposed to be. And there's little things. Um, the Sabbath. The Sabbath was really for two, three, four reasons. It's not a, a reason. There's a Sabbath because God took a Sabbath. The Sabbath because you work better after your rest. But you also realize that the Sabbath was a very large witnessing tool. Can you imagine doing a business order on Friday and go, oh, I'll come over Saturday, I'll give you a check, we'll sign it, we'll, we'll do this business and you'll make your million bucks. Yeah, can't do it. Come by Sunday, I'm busy. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. But they're doing what? I don't work. God told me don't work, I don't work. I can make as much money in six days as you can in seven. Here, let, let me prove it. I'm not working tomorrow. <laughs> and what, you know, what do you do that? I think, like I think most of the ceremonial laws in the in the book is just just that to separate you from from the two. I think these people ate pork, so we're not going to eat pork. These people work seven days a week. We're going to work six. <laughs> I really think all that is really that simple because I really don't think to a large degree that God's going to say, hey, all meat is edible, but if you read the next book over this chapter, pork isn't one of them. But besides that, all, all meat's edible. <laughs> as long as you look, look, look in two places. And I definitely don't buy pork has trichinosis and you have to cook it properly. Well, I'm pretty sure God can say cook something prop properly. I don't think that would be that hard of a concept. I mean, we can do it ourselves. Cook it until there's no red in it. Okay, really. That was too hard for God to figure out. <laughs> hard to tell us. But when it comes to the law, and it comes to all of this, actually when it comes to the world, I'm generally uh, pretty opinionated on what's right. But I will admit Lately, waking up reading the news, I'm not quite sure if I'm right on the historical edge of eschatology. <laughs> I, I still get nervous when all the world's fighting over Israel. It's like, man, there's, there's one slip in the whole world with no oil in it, and then that's Israel. What are we fighting over this for? I get somewhat paranoid. And then I was, saw this video tape. This lady on everybody's favorite news for the very smart people, The View, 
The world's coming to an end because there was a solar eclipse. They're fighting in Israel, and the cicadas are coming. It must be the end of the world. I'm going, yeah, eclipses and, and insects. Okay. <laughs> there have been eclipses before. The world's still here. <laughs> we have cicadas that come every 17 years come before. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we had a war in the Middle East once or twice, I think, in my lifetime. <laughs> I think it'd be more paranoid. Oh, look, there's peace in the Middle East. That may make me even more paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so let's go back to this. Sin equals death. God, Jesus paid the price. It's my first argument against uh, Elijah not, not, not dying. Oh, not Elijah. Um, Elijah and uh, Enoch. Where Enoch wasn't. If it's possible for somebody to go to heaven without Christ dying, then it's kind of mean for God to, to whack Christ, I think. Yeah, no disagreement. Unless he's also covered by the blood just in, the, in this timey, time sense thing. And time is, you know, time That's is a part of the creation. So, you know, so what, what, what's time? What does the doctor say time is? Wibbly wobbly. It's wibbly wobbly. <laughs> well, you still have sin equals death. And sin, what's the definition of sin? Everybody knows sin. Disobedience. You what? Disobedience. And the proper term that everybody, that the definition really, really is? To miss the mark. To miss the mark which is one of the most unhelpful definitions mm -hmm. I've seen. But if you take sin to be disobedience, that's much easier to, to grasp and to understand. And so it is a sin to do good and not, to know to do good and not do it, that's a sin. It's the same as knowing not to do it and do it. Yeah. <laughs> same, same, same coin, same, same sign. Jesus came to fulfill the law. It's been fulfilled. You sin, you die. Christ did that dying part for us so you can live forever and not worry about it. The other thing, too, is that it's still, still valid because you've got to convince people that they are a sinner even in 2024. If the law is done away with us, what does the law really do? The law convicts you. The law no. says you're guilty. It goes, you, you right there, yeah. you're guilty. There's no... There's no love in the law. There's no grace. All it does is make you guilty. That's all it does. So we're not really like to be under the law. It's not something you should look toward to look forward to. Because it's just because then, guess what? If you never break the law, you know what you get? Nothing. <laughs> if you break the law, you know what you get? Death. Three to five years. <laughs> you get death. Yeah. So there is no reward for not breaking the law. And one last thing I, I always like to, to think about. Our idea of justice. I mean, God has a little bit different take than most of us. Uh, if you work all day, you get a penny. You work the last hour, you get a penny. Uh, God, there's also a, a scripture of God is the one who makes uh, vases, bosses, plates. He can make one for honor, one for dishonor. Who are you to say what, what you are? Here in the West, if you take a look, we have that uh, lady justice with a blindfold on, except for in D.C. She has the scales in her hands. Most people think that you put the evidence for you on one scale, and the evidence against you on the other scale, in whatever way it tips, is whether you're innocent or guilty. That is not what the scales are. It's not what they are in Christianity. It's not what they are in Western thought. In Western thought, much like Christianity, you put everything for you and against you on one side. In Western thought, on the other side of that scale is justice. That's where it goes up and down. You can be guilty of jaywalking, 
And if the penalty is death, that is not justice. So if, it, if you're being in part of the jury, if that penalty comes down and overweighs the crime, you get to say innocent, even though he's guilty of jaywalking. There will not be justice for you to send somebody to death for jaywalking. In Christianity, you take all that you've done, and unfortunately all you have not done, <laughs> and to see where the scales went on the other side, you have Christ, who balances out the scales. So as long as Christ is more righteous than you are, I like the mods. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in. <laughs> you're good, because that is justice. God paid the price. He has, the, he has done the time. <coughs> sort of like the scale of justice of it. And yep. Like I said, it, is, it isn't, you're, you know, isn't a for and against. It, it's, you're on one side, God's on the other. And what God says goes. You, you don't really get a vote, vote in that. <laughs> okay. Let us finish this. Anything else? Well, yes. I should probably save them for my own sermons. Okay. The, the one is the, the um, context I helped things to understand the cross and what really changed. Because we seem, as a species, to grasp the idea that our sins were moved before the cross were moved forwards. We seem to have that down pat pretty well. I think it'd be fair to say the exact same thing for those born after the cross, that your sins are moved back. Exactly. I, I, think you're, well, I think you're correct. Laws and rules and commandments that came from God do not go away. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and gravity just no longer applies. Because, I wish. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> But because, because God is not subject to time, from his point of view, I think it would, doesn't make a difference. And it's hard to consider time a part of creation. Yeah. But, and and it just a, it's just, it's fascinating to sit there and figure out the smartest mind in the world, Einstein, got one thing apparently mostly right. <laughs> E equals MC squared. Yeah. E is energy times mass squared. And the squared is the speed of light. I think that's yep. right. the, the C is the speed of light, so you take the mass times the speed of light, square it. And that's what makes atomic bombs work. <laughs> so as long as you ignore quantum physics immediately disproving that, like 10 years later. Yep. He, He's great. And it works the same with, same thing with evolution. Our buddy who came up with evolution, what did he write in, in his theory? If you don't find the missing link in what? I think the proper verbiage was in a short time. Right. Then this is not true. Yeah, this is just <laughs> complete nonsense. And no, they're I, still I, looking for it. <laughs> I, I know, you know, a thousand years as a day with God, but I thought, you know, I thought people were a little, a little <laughs> more than a... Uh, you know, anything more than 20 minutes is a long time. <laughs> anything that's longer than your DMV trip is definitely a long time. <laughs> a couple of universal truths here we we got we got to go with. <laughs> and it, it is hard to figure out time and what it is, and it's all. You know, I, I, I you know, there wasn't a trick question, but I think you're right. It's not 66 books with 37 authors or whatever. It's one book with one author over a couple of thousand, thousand years, give or take, depending on how you count the time before Moses. The more I think about it, I think Moses did write the stuff before Moses. Might be some written down by others. But, it, you know, it, it's still a long time. and it, 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 It's just simply true. And you can't... I don't understand people who are concerned about you know, the, the sheep or the, are more concerned about tithing two cups of meal and a cup of oil instead of doing what's right. Because oh, it's so much easier to follow, follow rules. It's much easier to follow, you know, 
No, yeah. Price said, yeah, great. The, the tithe on mint, mint and what? Anis. Anis? So that you tie the little things, but we're going to let the, the poor be poor and the disenfranchised be disenfranchised. And that's something, too. I I don't think we, the church, are as guilty as the leftist liberal media makes us out to be. No. We do a thousand times more for the poor than the liberals ever can. Sure. And, the, and the largest thing we do for the poor is... Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. I don't know. Work. <laughs> <laughs> work solves a, a bunch of ills. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I am getting old to the point where I'm starting to think about retirement. And I can't think. And not to be rude to anybody. I mean, I'm not pointing fingers or anything else. This is totally personal. I can't think of what good I am if I'm not working. And those are your disabilities. I'm not storing anything at all, but you, I assume you feel the same way. I mean, it's, you got to have a purpose in life. And I am willing to substitute that purpose with a, with a, uh, a hobby. But I can't find a hobby. <laughs> you got to do something. You're not made to get up in the morning, eat breakfast, and watch television. Eat dinner and go to bed. I know that's not what you're for. Yeah. Now, I got no problem with uh, getting up, eating breakfast, sitting on the side of the hill, kind of playing the meaning of life. <laughs> Thinking up the next great thing. I got no problem with people, you know, and, and this is part of the mosaic. People who come up with the get rich schemes. Do more I, work than the rest of us, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never get there, I'll be honest. But even even they can make a billion once in a, once in a while. Even those guys you make it. You're, you're made to do something, you know. It's, you know, to take care of somebody, love somebody. Uh. Ecclesiastes said that our purpose is to love our fellow man and worship God. Yep. And that's that's purposeful life. And the love of the fellow man can be defined in a lot of different ways. Yep. Everything from correctional officer to pastor to teacher to to janitor. And you know what? And they're way underappreciated, but artists and dreamers and poets. If I were physically capable of it, I'd look for work yep. <laughs> Not right now. It just, it's just yeah. something to do. I, I don't think we and were made to retire, as we call it. We weren't. It, it is purpose in life, though. If God removes every other thing for you to spend your time praying for other people, that's a tremendous purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to poo-poo the, the, the artists and dreamers either. That's true. What would life be with no music? No so art. So. Cars. So. Cars, planes, automobiles. What would life be without television? You like to better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, television is part of the arts. I, I will go along with that. It started out as black and white. <laughs> nah. uh it started out as radio. Oh, yeah, well, no, true. true. Nah, uh, I started out as telling stories around the fireplace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. And even before that, to generational thing, from one generation to another. Let us pray. Dear loving and gracious Father, we love you this morning, Lord, to come in your house to learn, Lord, of you and to hear your word. We pray that you be with us and guide us this coming week, Lord, keep your hand upon us and our loved ones. Direct us and guide us to do what you would have us to do. We pray for this food that you're about to eat and nurture to our bodies so we can do your work. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. So has our language changed or the meaning? What does the word law actually mean? What is the definition of that? How is the jaywalking law, the law of life and death, and the law of gravity all the same thing? I have it in my blog. Hold on. If you're gonna jaywalk, can you at least like at run instead of calmly walking? No. And please yes. don't do it on the highway <laughs> after dark. Uh, why are you wasting extra energy for running? You can because play Frogger. Why you keep across the five lane highway? Well, Mom looks that up. I think that law is gonna be whatever is true. Uh, uh, I'm on the road and can see the Just true. Yeah. The truth. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. You cannot go faster than the speed of light. That's the law. That's the truth. Yeah. You cannot, you cannot, or you can, you can. You, you sow, you will reap. That's the truth.